All right, guys, welcome back to another Sequin episode. Today we're doing a trophy room walkthrough, uh, but first we got to get some business handled. And you guys may remember the unfortunate demise of the limo. Well, today we're picking her back up. She is back from the grave. We're pulling into Jay's house right now to pick her up. She, I, this is a, su a surprise. Apparently there's a lot of stuff that's been fixed up and done by our buddy Kevin. And he's gonna give us a walkthrough of that. And stay tuned because in a few minutes in this video, we're actually gonna be going through our giveaway announcement for this year's deer season. And the limo is involved in that giveaway. So, got my buddy Kendall here. We're pulling into Jay's house now and uh, gonna lay eyes on her. <laughs> A brush guard? I had to. <laughs> you run into stuff sometimes. <laughs> so this is Kevin. He's the guy that has brought the limo out of the grave. Not only out of the grave, you put some some spunk back in her now. Dude, we can't give this thing away. It just it, <laughs> we can't give it, it away. It just feels now. good going down the road with that rack right on the front. I don't is know what it was new, yesterday. Is this a new grill? Or did you spread paint the grill? You had it. Holy man! What is this thing? <laughs> what did y'all do to this thing? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, the inside? Kendall, Jay, we can't give this away Jay, anymore. It's got new brakes because the brakes were, they're old. I painted the grill black. I found this full bar off of a trailblazer and it came with the light bar. So I got it for a good deal through Facebook Marketplace. So then we added the pods on the front for extra light, put HID headlights. Uh, we did the hood ornament. You had halogen lights and your KC lights at Wild Willie's. So the windows no now way. go down on both sides. Replace your speakers and the doors on both sides. So now you have a Bluetooth radio where you can connect your phone to listen to music. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the mufflers got cut out. I did side pipes because I didn't feel like going all the way over the axle. Turn out right before the tire. This has been, these taken apart and now they have orange LED strips wired in into the inside. Pulled the seats out, we did the carpet and then as we got in there, we noticed that the wall needed to be redone. Yeah. It doesn't smell. And it doesn't smell. Unbelievable. This thing is fully functional. I mean, and y'all can post in the comments below if y'all want to. I say we give the limo away. We get a newer model with a newer engine, newer programming setup to where we can hook our computers to and program, do whatever we want. And maybe add a turbo, maybe a supercharger. And instead of just cruising down the road, this thing's going to rip rubber. on the new one. <laughs> I'm talking... <laughs> Full tires spinning. You can have your beer hanging out the window in the back seat, and you can do your donuts. And you can do your I donuts. I can do my donuts. You can do, oh, your, okay. do that's your donuts. That's a fair compromise. On asphalt instead of dirt. All right. So you have a you have a YouTube channel you're working on. We we decided to start one. I've been told years ago I should do it. Um, we've done a lot of performance stuff. Okay. So uh, we start off with Hondas. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, you might not know, but it's called an MK4 Super. We got one of those at shop right now, twin turbo. Okay. Um, we actually have we're, one of our first videos is a 2016 Denali. It's got the uh, 6.2 V8 in it. It is getting fully built, stroked, and it's getting a turbo kit. We're going to shoot for about 1,200 horsepower. And it's still got third row seat, flip down TV, AC cooled seats. So performance is what we do, but uh, we're going to give a dabble at it. Well, this thing found its found the right hands for you to be in. If y'all want to go check his YouTube channel out, we'll put the link in the description. If y'all want to see what well, you're talking another language. I don't, I don't know all oh, the stuff yeah. you're talking about, but... I mean, it's, dude, I'm thankful to know have friends like you for I mean, sure. We just like going fast <laughs> and doing anything that's not supposed to be done. Huh? One more surprise for you. No way! <laughs> My life is complete. You don't understand. You don't understand. I forgot all about you that. Don't understand. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's so loud. <laughs> what you got? They didn't fix the door handle? I just gotta unlock it is all. See? She works just fine. Isn't this thing just a thing of absolute stunning beauty? She looks a lot better than she did about a month ago. So yeah, I'll I give mean, her that. Dude, did you see the back? It doesn't smell anymore. Which that's is, 
That's tough to believe. Uh, dude, it doesn't smell anymore. Brand new car. It was, the, it was the carpet that was the issue. Is that reclaimed wood? Yeah. Paneling? Fancy Look stuff. at that. Dang. Where's the wine cooler at? I don't know. Only the finest for the Seek One limo. And it's officially the Seek One limo because it actually says Seek One. So. And all of that just proud, to give it I'm away. Just a proud, proud father. Yeah. All right. So, well, come over here. So. Here's the deal. <clears throat> we wanted to do something big for you guys for this year's, this season's giveaway. We did the boat last year. You guys loved it. It was awesome. We actually drove it to, where did we, where did we drive to? Uh, Virginia. Was somewhere it Virginia? Virginia? It was somewhere in Virginia and gave it to an awesome family. Uh, I'm really glad that they won because they were really thrilled about it. And so we were sitting there thinking like, what's the next big thing? What can we do to get people excited again? And the grand prize this year, honestly, this is really going to hurt, especially with the upgrades that we just did, because this is my most prized possession. Like, there is nothing on this planet, object-wise, that I care about more than my limo. Take any amount of my house before you take the limo. This is tough. That's, no. no dude, That's I'm telling you, I freaking love this thing. I've got a <laughs> lot of history with this thing. So it so hurts. Your, all right, then what's your address? So People hurts, can come take it. No, 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 no. <laughs> it hurts me to say... That we're gonna give it away, but you know what? I wanted to give something away from from my heart that I cared about to you guys. It's all about you guys, and I figured that you guys would love this thing. So, as much as it hurts, I'm excited to give it to a new owner. Um, one of you guys watching right now can win. How we're gonna do it is through the viral sweeps thing that we did last year. Same program as the boat giveaway, where it tracks. You have to subscribe to our channel. We're gonna give it away on our Instagram live. It tracks your activity, like if you like our video, if you, I don't know, what else, if you follow us on Instagram, if you buy merch, there's stuff like that where you can gain more entries to win. Um, I don't want to do just one grand prize winner this year. I want to have multiple people win. So we're going to give away a brand new, new canoe kayak. These things are the best kayaks on the market, and we've absolutely beat these things to death, and they are just tanks. So we're going to give away a brand new, new canoe kayak to one of you guys, probably the second place winner. And then the third place winner is going to be a brand new Hoyt bow. So there's going to be three winners, multiple winners. Uh, we want more people to win, more people to have a chance at winning something. So I think that they we should pick the top three, and they get to decide what prize they win. There is no way that anybody would choose anything except the limo first. <laughs> I would be personally very offended if someone chose, as much as I love New Canoe and Hoy, I would, I would, I would honestly be heartbroken if someone didn't choose a limo. Uh, anyways, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to do a trophy room uh, tour. A lot of you guys have asked about that, so we're gonna kind of roll into that. I'm gonna show you guys around my house a little bit, maybe get into a few personal things y'all didn't know about me, um, and we're gonna be doing this with everybody. So I actually just filmed Jay's uh, a couple yesterday, and. Um, Dude, his his trophy room's pretty phenomenal. Like his is his is goals. Mine's unique, but his is definitely goals. So he's the OG. He is the OG. <laughs> um, rolling through. I mean, you know, this is kind of like. I mean, I got my target here. I usually kind of shoot down my driveway. Uh, I think it's an important disclaimer to say that my neighbors hate me, uh, and I mean that. I'm not just saying that to be funny. They literally hate me. I. Uh, R.I.P. Hank. Yeah, I mean, I had a I had a turkey. His cage was back here. I had a turkey that lived in my backyard. Uh, actually, I have some clips. Let's actually play some of those clips right now. Hey. <laughs> but anyways, I had a pet turkey, Hank, who lived in my backyard. He gobbled a lot. Neighbors didn't like it. They were filing noise complaints, and they uh, actually called animal control and had him removed from the neighborhood. So, I have loud objects. I do a lot of just rambunctious things. I don't think I'm meant for the city, but I was born here. I just happen to do things that probably don't belong here. Uh, I used to hang, actually come, come check this out. So that there branch on that there tree is where I used to hang and clean all of my deer. And that was kind of the first step into my neighbors absolutely hating me. I've actually, I've, I'm trying to be a good neighbor. I've been courteous. I actually put a deer hanger in my garage that so we do all of our deer cleaning because I was all over the app next door neighbor with people getting really mad at me for hanging and skinning a deer because it was... Thanks to Rob Turkla. 
traumatic to their kids. It was actually Rob Turkle's deer. Um, that's my truck. And something that people don't know about my truck is I actually won that truck. I didn't buy that truck. I had an old truck and I shot a deer and it was a, for this GON outdoor blast. They have a truck buck shootout. I think it's like 40 something people that enter it. And basically if you miss your target, you're out. Last man standing wins a truck. I won that truck, traded in my old truck and the new truck I won to get that truck. So I kind of won that thing, which is, uh, that's pretty neat. So let's roll into my garage. That's my boat. Drew and I both fished in college, bass, competitively bass fish. That was honestly my first love in the outdoors um, that kind of sparked this thing of getting involved in the hunting and kind of branching outside of fishing. But this is my garage setup, and here's probably the highlight of it is our deer hanger. I've got a scale up here. Uh, we've killed some deer that have huge bodies here in Atlanta, and we've been curious on how much they weigh. So. I've got this thing rigged up to the ceiling, and it's got this fancy dancy little button here. If I can lower down, I take this here bucket, stick it under right there, raise the deer up, do all my gutting inside my garage so that my neighbors don't continue to hate me even more. Uh, I've got a sink area here where we do a lot of, uh, you know, cleaning of the deer, quartering them out, things like that. And I think what our plan is this year is to put a big freezer on this wall right here uh, where we can, you know, have a, basically doe days where we take multiple deer, things like that, and um, put them in there to uh, make sure that we keep them fresh before we get into the processor. I also want to do some of our own processing this year, but I've got... Some stuff on the wall where I'm hanging, just my lock-on stands, my tethered stands, stuff like that. I've got my step-up pegs or my uh, my pegs over here. I've got camera arms and stuff in the corner. I've got this pallet where I keep just like feed and I got soybeans and trophy rocks and stuff that we keep kind of in that corner over there. Um, RIP to the Rambo bikes. Yeah, rip to those things. They keep breaking on us. This is where trail cameras go to die. This is just a massive graveyard of cameras, as you, if you can't tell. These things are uh, have definitely seen better days. So, anyways, let's uh, move on inside. Honestly, this next part better than my trophy room. Not no, not not better than my trophy room, but honestly, I'm really I'm just really proud of this next part. You haven't even seen this. You ready? You know how I love pork rinds, right? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm kind of more shocked that it's organized. Yeah. When it comes to things I love, I'm a little organized. So I got all my pork rinds here. I got a variety here. Obviously, I've found a flavor that I like the most. I got my CT Crunch up here. And uh, yeah, CT Crunch and uh, pork rinds is pretty much all a man needs. So this is my house. And yeah, this is a yuppie house. This is a city house. It's uh, I didn't choose to be born in Atlanta. I just I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> my mother did it. Did this. This was not my doing. I had control over a couple rooms in this house. It's pretty obvious which ones that I did. But this is my house, and um, I guess we can start. I mean, you can obviously see like some of the touches I've done around here. Or you've been dropping in, bro. Yeah, we'll get is, that, to that is, that your, is that your gaming station? We'll get to that later. That's my command post. We'll get to that later. I got some old deer antlers in here. Uh, so this is one of my favorite matching sheds I found. It's a deer I called Bully. I actually saw that deer in velvet. In full of that, this was the year that I saw him do it too. He was living in the same kudzu patch as Charlie in a different area of it. And I saw this deer in full velvet lock up with another buck that had already shed antlers. And it's just not something you see every day that a deer in full velvet is attacking and fighting another buck. Uh, he was definitely, definitely a bully, so I named him Bully. One of my most pretty set of matching sheds I found. I got a bunch over here that we'll kind of take a look at too. Um, these here are hands down my most prized shed antlers. I don't know if y'all can guess or recognize this deer, but this is actually Zeus the year before that I killed him. And we measured him at 193 inches the year that he dropped these. And he ended up scoring 203 the next year. I believe he was seven or eight when he dropped these shed antlers. 
So from about seven to eight or eight to nine, he actually put on 10 inches, which is pretty amazing. I mean, you know, that just kind of goes to show like you get a deer to the right age, they're still going to put on antlers. And that's, it seems to vary from deer to deer. Some deer do it late, some deer do it early, but from that old, he was still packing on more antler. I actually have, yeah, here it is here. This is, uh, that's another Zeus antler. This is the year before this one. So he kind of had, it almost looks like an alligator foot brow tine right there and a split G2. And that was the year before I, this was the year before I killed him. This was the year before this one. So pretty cool to have history with these deer. A lot of these deer that I have, um, this right here is an antler. Uh, this is Leo the year before I killed him. This was a deer I killed last year. It's on our YouTube. And he went from kind of this funky five side here to a clean four. So he's a four by four on both sides. So he was a clean eight pointer. Um, one of the, my favorite things to do, I'll show some more shed antlers is I love to hunt shed antlers in the springtime. I think that it, I knock on a lot of doors and it's really easy to get people to say yes um, when you're just shed, ant shed antler hunting or you're shed hunting. So I use, that a, I use that a lot to get a lot of scouting done in that time of year, um, finding shed antlers, getting access to a lot of properties I can lay eyes on. And sometimes it kind of helps me hone in on where certain deer are kind of hiding out at. But, and starting to build a relationship with for, yeah, for sure. So any it's any kind of foot in, the door. foot in the door to build that relationship where they can start to trust you is definitely a step in the right direction of actually nailing down permission. This is a buck year to year, I and mean, he was pretty much the exact same. This was the year before, this was the next year. And he was also living in the same kudzu batch as Charlie. Uh, this deer here is a deer I called Big Papa. He's in my trophy room. Uh, I killed him the year after this. Uh, let's see. Mm. This is a shed antler off of uh, the deer Rob Turklet killed when he came in town. So it's just kind of cool to us. Like we're really passionate about these deer and the amount of history and just time that we put into learning these deer. It's a 365 day a year job. We do, we just live and breathe this stuff year round. So like all the deer we find and that we've had stories for you guys on our YouTube is years and years and years of history with these animals, tracking them, learning them, finding out where they're spending their time. And that's a full, that's a year, year round job right there. So some of my shed antlers there. Um, do you, let me ask you this. Do you want to, Oh, this is my command center. Um, so I'm, I live by myself in this house and, uh, during the season and stuff, we're not really home that much. We're traveling a ton and we're tra traveling a lot more as you know, we can continue to get more busy with this stuff. But you know, on the nights that I'm home, I live here by myself. I drop with the boys. Okay. I know that some, there's some people out there that are like, Oh, video games, you shouldn't, you know, whatever. I drop with the boys. Okay. It's at night. I live here by myself. What's your gamer tag, bro? I, I can't tell you that because it's, it's not an appro it's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe I'll leave my gamer tag. If we get enough comments or something, maybe I'll leave my gamer tag in here and I'll pick like three or four comments to just like randomly drop with one night. But you can't tell people what my gamer tag is because it's, it's embarrassing. Uh, do you want to go to the basement, which is kind of my spillover room? Do you want to save the best for last? I think we just go straight to the, to the best. Let me show you my spillover room real quick. Okay. I don't know if we'll put it in Wrong here decision. or not. Let's see the room where you get yoked, bro. We can. We certainly can. Um, <clears throat> I like to exercise, and again, I'm single, so I can kind of do what I want with my house. So I put in a little, little gym down here, blow off some steam when I need to. I will destroy you in foosball right now. Uh, we can yeah. stop this video. Dude, we played in high school. I know how good you are. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. I'm not, I'm not playing. We'll play for a mount. A mount of much No way. I might as well just give you a mount. This is kind of my, pro this is my project room. So this is where I actually want kind of some of y'all's feedback on like what I should do here. What I want to do is 
I want to start messing with my own bows, like tuning my own bows, working on my own bows. I want to build essentially kind of a workshop down here. Uh, this is kind of my spillover where I just am running out of room. What is that? That's a gigantic Pikachu. I won that at a carnival in Alabama. And I spent like two hours trying to win him. <laughs> He's huge. I mean, it's life size. I could fit inside this thing. That's life. Is that how big Pikachu is in real life? Uh, I really don't know. <laughs> but anyways, um, this is kind of spillover. I actually killed that deer on a buddy's farm in in Texas. On like, it was several several thousand acres. Uh, this is one of the first deer I killed. This is this is really early on. I think I was in high school when I killed this deer in Atlanta. This is one of my first bucks that I was like really proud of. Um, another Atlanta deer, again, this is way back. I think I was like a freshman in college. And so this is kind of my spillover room where mounts are starting to fill in down here. I've got some of my turkey stuff here. Check this beard out. That thing's thicker than oatmeal. She's thick. Oh, she's thick. Um, so I got my turkey stuff down here. I got all my camo from the season, uh, turkey decoys and stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to set up like... I want to keep all my camo separate from the rest of my house where I'm spending most of my time. And I want to keep my camo down here separate from all of that. Um, but I'm thinking workshop, man cave. Like when you watch Jay's episode, his man cave is freaking spot on. I kind of want to do something like that down here. So give me a few ideas of, you know, things I can kind of do down here to make this place a better man cave. Now we'll go to the main, what I would say the main event, my most prized room. Here's a little behind the scenes for you at Sequel. And I don't know if you guys recognize this thing or not. <laughs> that thing got a lot of flack. This caused a lot of debate and arguments because I'll be honest with you guys, it was clickbait. I'll admit it, it was clickbait. <laughs> Drew rigged this thing up on Rod and Reel. It was the fishing dangerous canals shots fired video. And at the very end, you see this alligator head coming behind and I pull out my Glock and just start firing at the thing. And it was totally staged. It was just a joke thing. At the end of the video, we were like, what could we do that was super, would be super hilarious? And kind of sparked a viral video there. Some people were upset about that clickbait, but hey. I'm not upset about it. I'm not either. <laughs> you ready? Yes. Welcome to my man cave. There's a dink or two on the wall in here. I, dude, I don't know what it is. This is where I do most of my work. Like if I'm sitting at home doing office work kind of stuff, I can just come in this room and like, it's almost like you're so enclosed in here. I just like, I don't know. It's just like a sense of peace where I'm just like, ah. I and just like. You just can't soak. get anything done because you think about all the stories just of drool, the books. Yeah, drooling <laughs> over the next one. But I just, I don't know. I can sit in this room and just like, honestly reminisce about all the memories and how, how much each of these animals meant to me, all the effort that went into it. And it's just like the amount of just satisfaction from, it's just so much effort that has yielded this room. And I can just kind of sit here and just have almost just like an overwhelming sense of peace. So I, I, I can't really explain it, but it's like a part of my soul is in every one of these deer. And there's a faith story behind every single one of them. I've prayed like wildfire and lost so much sleep, but there's a faith story in every single one of these deer. Um, again, fishing rods kind of set up. I love fishing, love bass fishing. It was my first love outdoors. And I'm really competitive when it comes to fishing. You can ask Drew because we have an annual fishing tournament every year and this is the trophy the that you get if you win. Trophy, you and win. Drew lost last year, so this puppy is sitting in my office for a year. Why so, don't we start with the fish? That's honestly one of the most cool, well, that's probably one of the coolest things in this room. This fish uh, was an 18 pound, 18.35 pound bass that I caught when I was like 14 years old. Um, I was on a fishing trip with my mom and we were, I don't even know what we were doing, but it was in Florida and we were uh, fishing some like, 
I don't even remember the name of the lake, but it was a, just a very unknown lake. It was about around like a bunch of orange groves and I caught this fish and we didn't get it certified, but when we weighed it on a scale, it was 1835. And if I had gotten it certified, it would have been the junior world record. Cause I think the junior world record was like 17 pounds at the time. So we took all the measurements, took all the pictures, everything like that, actually let the fish go. Um, and this is my replica with it. So it, this, this would have been, if I had gotten it certified, I guess this would technically be like the unofficial junior world record. I don't think many people know that, but. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I love that thing. So rolling into deer. You guys probably recognize this deer. This is my first velvet buck and it was from Nashville last year. Uh, call him Combs. And that video is up on our YouTube. Shot that deer at 62 yards and I cried like a little girl because again, I just put so much effort into it. It was so much leading up to it that I honestly sometimes can't control my emotions when it just eventually, then when it happens, when that moment happens. And so I cried like a little baby, get over it. Don't make fun of me, go ahead. Um, 181 inches and honestly one of the coolest bucks I've ever taken for sure. And I don't think that this next deer needs any introduction at all. Uh, this is the OG buck, Charlie. And he was 181 inches pretty much as a, as a nine pointer. And um, no, sorry, he was 183. And uh, I mean, the massive brow tine on him. I named him Charlie Brow, as in Charlie Brown, but Charlie Brow is how he got the name Charlie. I mean, probably the most special deer to me in this room. I think hands down the most special deer to me in this room. He's the one that started it all. Again, that episode is on our YouTube and that story, Drew was, you were cutting out of work. I mean, I, I, we, that was like the first year we had cell cams and I'd be, it'd be like, it'd be like noon and Drew's working at a, uh, a home builder's office. I'm like, I was working as a, uh, as an insurance salesman at the time. <laughs> and I was like, dude, he's there right now. We got to go. We'd like both just cut out of work, which I was fine to do because I was going to hunt. Drew was just filming and he was cutting out of work. So that's kind of how we got started with this whole thing. All this madness that has ensued since. So there's a lot of stories, a lot of emotion that went into that one. So rolling on, um, I have my bows here. This is, uh, obviously we're going to be giving away one of these brand new Hoyts this year, but, um, these are some of, this is like my RX four. I've got my RX five back here. I've got this one set up for lighter arrows so I can shoot further distances. And I'm going to have that one set up for heavier arrows where I can get more penetration. Um, for kind of my shoulder shots, making sure I can get through shoulder blades and stuff like that. But I've got fishing rods in the corner. I love to fish from the beach for sharks. Um, I just love that, like just going to war type feeling when you're fishing. And I love catching big sharks from the beach. So got my big surf rod there. This deer is Achilles and he was 177 inches. Uh, this was before Seek One was a thing. And I wish we had filmed this story because it was awesome. Um, I had an encounter with him opening day of that season. Didn't get it done. Found him probably three miles away uh, in November and killed him mid-November chasing a doe. And that was my first really big deer um, from Atlanta that kind of, you know, just got it rolling for us. I mean, that was that was the first one that, that was that upper class deer for me. Uh, this one is Thor, which he's also on our YouTube. He was two, just shy of 208 inches. He is the Cobb County archery record buck. And I think he has 24 scorable points. And I don't think I cried on that one. I think I was good there. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. I but think it all happened too fast. Yeah, it did. It did. That one happened like opening week. And um, I still, I mean, I'm still looking at him and I can't even just like, I still can't even believe what I'm looking at with how many points and the character and just the mass. Like, it's just crazy to me that these deer exist in the suburban areas of our country. So, uh, this deer here was from Birmingham last year. Um, that's also up on our channel. Uh, that deer was one that we had pretty good history with, um, had hung cameras for him early in the summer, ended up getting it done late in the year. This buck here, 
was a deer, a story that did not get told. This deer was hit by a car and I put a ton of effort into this deer and uh, it just never, never went down for him. He uh, actually totaled a, some woman's Mercedes Benz that she had bought the day before. <laughs> so, you did, I mean, if he did damage, he did, he, did a, he did a pretty good job of messing stuff up, but um, pretty cool deer, that massive brow tine right there. And you can, he had a broken nose and everything. So glad to have that one. I just started doing my own European mounts, which I actually really enjoy. Um, that's actually, uh, this is, this is a public land buck from Tennessee from last year. I just started doing my own European mounts and that's probably reason number 574 that my neighbors hate me is that when I go to boil deer heads in my driveway, it smells too high heaven. And, uh, you know, all my surrounding neighbors know when I'm boiling deer heads again. So it smells rank, but they turned out pretty cool. The man himself, Zeus, uh, showed you his shed antlers earlier. He is 203 inches. I don't think I'll ever shoot a deer that will even compare to just how prehistoric this deer is. Like his mass is with just, I mean, he has got everything that a deer hunter dreams about. And I just, you know, Thor scores more, but Thor's rack can fit inside of Zeus's. And it's just one of those deer that Again, I just don't think I will ever kill a deer that is like comparable to just the overall size and mass of him. And moving on to Bane, um, this deer, multiple years of history with him. He was 161 inches as an eight pointer. And uh, that's as pretty as an eight pointer gets. The dark rack, like the dark chocolate rack is, he's, he is one of my favorite deer and he actually broke off another probably three, four inches off the top of this G3. So he'd have been, you know, 164-ish as just a mainframe eight pointer. Freaking just absolutely gorgeous deer. And the story with that one was highs and lows. You were in the tree with me. You were in the tree with me. Most of, most of these deer were killed. Mm -hmm. uh, lefty, uh, 193 inches. One of the smartest deer I've ever hunted. Um, Hunted him for like 50 sits in one season. Basically what he had done was he had patterned me. It was one of the, it was the cat and mouse game. Every time I was there, he wasn't there. Every time I wasn't there, he'd come through. And I found out he had actually patterned where I was coming in. It was my access, where I was coming into the woods. He was bedding right by there so he knew when that area was compromised. He had patterned where I was coming in. And when I figured that out, I changed it up, put a ground blind on the other side of the property where he had no idea that I was in there and it took one sit and killed that deer. Definitely one of the smartest deer I've ever hunted and it goes to show, I don't think we give these deer enough credit sometimes for what they're capable of, of, of how finely tuned they are with their environments. This is a deer I showed you shed antler of earlier. This is a big papa, 151 inches is an eight pointer. Uh, killed him in college at the spot that Drew and I first got permission in Atlanta. Awesome deer, had a bunch of bunch of history with him. This is a deer we call Joker, 156 inches. Again, from that first OG spot that Drew and I got way back in the day. Uh, this was a deer that I killed in South Alabama on a buddy's farm. It was like eight or 900 acres. It was a buddy in college. And at the time it was, I think it was the biggest deer they ever killed on their farm. They've had the farm for a long time and uh, Rattled, actually run it and grattled that run, runted and grappled. Did I really just say that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> gra gra grunted. Grunt. Thank you. Grunted and rattled that deer in. Golly, man, that's bad. Let me get you hooked on phonics. That's bad. Words are hard, man. Um, grunted and rattled that deer in. <laughs> Did I just say it again? No, I said it right, dude. You said grunted and grattled. I said grunted and rattled. I called the deer in and I shot him. It was South Alabama, I was in college. This deer was from the first year that we filmed any of our series. We filmed a series for Mossy Oak and uh, that deer was on our YouTube right there. He's 153 inches. This deer is Pops and he's the oldest deer that we have ever hunted, uh, 10 years old. I had pictures of him in high school and I killed him two seasons ago. Was that two seasons ago? Yeah, yeah two seasons ago. I literally had pictures of him when I was in high school and killed him two seasons ago. 
I know for a fact this deer was 10 and a half. And he was also, I think he was 147. Um, so pretty cool, unique story there. This is another ra random shed antler right here. Um, I'm trying to think. Is that it? I don't know. It's a lot. It is a lot. I feel like I rolled through it really quick. Zeus is ridiculous. Zeus is pretty cool, man. He's pretty neat. His little drop down doohickey here. Like that deer was definitely flown in on a helicopter from a high fence in Ohio. That you know what's kind of funny is we were actually accused. Of, actually, it was Charlie that we were accused of that because people couldn't believe these deer were coming from Atlanta, and I had DNR call me. We have a great relationship with DNR. We're friends with all of the local guys here, and they called me and they were like, "Hey, um, we just got a call that you." flew that deer in from a high fence in Ohio and staged like you shot it here in Atlanta. I was like, really? He's like, I'm dead serious. You got so, me. <laughs> busted, man. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's just, you know, when you get the right nutrition, you get the right environment, you get deer to the right age, I mean, deer can get pretty big, man. And that's what's been happening here in Atlanta. That's what's happening in in cities all over the US. All right guys, that is it. That is my mini house tour slash trophy room walkthrough. Um, I actually even forgot, I have three deer that are still at the taxidermist. I've got Big Earl, which he was 177 last year. Leo, who's a 160 inch eight pointer. And then I've got the Kentucky deer, which is like 140 inch eight pointer at the taxidermist. They're not even in here. So I gotta figure out where to put the, those boys at. Uh, big thanks to Mitchell Can, um, at Wildlife Addictions, Addictions Tax Army. He did most of the mounts in here. We're not sponsored by him. He's just a really good dude and um, does really good work. So, Mitchell, thank you. Big thanks to uh, Wild Willies on the limo for jacking it up for us and putting some mud tires on her. And big thank you to Kevin Prescott for bringing her back to life because uh, I thought she was done. And uh, now she is just a thing of absolute beauty. So, Giving her away, giving a new canoe kayak away, giving a brand new Hoyt bow away. Y'all be sure to subscribe, follow us on our Instagram. We're going to give it away on our Instagram. Um, so that's more towards the end of the season. Uh, we have the master class coming out. A lot of you guys have been asking about that. It's coming out. Uh, when's it coming out? Sometime in August. Sometime later in August. Before the season starts. Before the season starts. And I, guys, I have spent zero dollars and zero cents to gain access to hunt any of these deer. And I'm, we're spilling our guts. I mean, this, is, this has been years and years and years of developing our language, things to say, how to interact with people, of how to get really awesome hunting spots. And we're spilling the guts. I mean, we are literally showing everything um, in that masterclass. We've spent a lot of time and effort um, putting it together for you. Uh, we want you guys to be as successful as we are and that is our hope with the master classes that you guys become better hunters and you hope to learn a few things from us along the way. Uh, I think that is it. Uh, we got a little recap or uh, what we have planned for this season. We have the Nashville opener, Tennessee opener, uh, that velvet season coming up in a few weeks. We'll be up there. We have some freaking giant deer on camera and we're going to be going back to Birmingham. We're headed to Ohio next week to do some scouting up in uh, Columbus up there, maybe Cleveland. We'll figure that out. Um, aside from that, hunt Atlanta, hunt maybe Texas, uh, kind of throwing a bunch of different things in the mix, traveling to a bunch of new places. So y'all be sure to stay tuned to our season. Ours last year was pretty epic, but Dude, if we can get wet down what we got on camera right now, it would be legendary. So y'all be sure to stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't. Stay tuned for us in the season. And I hope y'all enjoyed this video.